the equities market sustained the positive momentum from last week as investors continue bargain hunting ahead of next week's MPC meeting. Kalista Chileke, investment research analyst at ARM Securities, joins me for a market discussion. Kalista, thank you so much. Hi. Pleasure to have you on the show thank today. Thank you. It's another uh, trading week uh, for Nigerian uh, stock investors. The yeah. year-to-date market has returned so far mm. just over 31 percent yeah. and it's been hovering between 29, 30, 31%. Uh, but we still see bargain hunting uh, continuing. So talk to us, uh, what were the, first of all, major trading highlight for you from last week? Well, last week we saw, um, you know, investors take profits in Orlando. We've seen Orlando, you know, um, take a downtrend in um, following like um, some of the corporate actions that has occurred, you know, okay. investors, you know, taking profits in Rwanda. Also, we saw losses in Boa Cement as well as Nestle, despite, you know, them Nestle announcing a 25 Naira dividend payment. Right. Um, but we saw last week as well, um, the market gained 0.50 percent week on week uh, following on the back of gains in UBA flour mills you know based off um, investors positive reaction of their share buyback mm -hmm. so that was you know what's majorly drove the markets um, mm -hmm. right. last week now it's still obviously a very difficult um, environment business environment for yeah. listed companies I mean every company uh, in Nigeria but do you think that investors have come to a place where they're able to really look you know, very closely at companies, see how the environment is impacting mm. on their bottom line, especially when we think about some of the, I mean, the consumer goods companies, yeah. some of those, some of them were you know, still exposed to FX uh, issues okay. outside of the, you know, the telcos. Uh, do you think that investors are able to have come to a place where they're just saying, okay, we know that this is the situation, but we less, what else can we look at to say, okay, this company is a company we can continue to, you know, buy well, shares. Oh, I think um, investors now, everybody has access to information now. Right. So, and we've seen the earnings results coming from most of these companies. And as expected, the consumer goods companies, they um, be, um, performed um, below par, of course. And we've seen investors begin to shy away from m many of these stocks, um, except flower mills just because of the um, corporate actions right. surrounding it. So investors have tried to, you know, tend towards, you know, safer heaven stocks like banking sector, oil and gas and um, industrial goods. Uh, do you think, I mean, f for them, uh, I understand why investors would do that, but yeah. we know that uh, economies work in cycles. Yes. Is there no faith? Is there no <laughs> confidence that and at some point, because we're still right in the middle of the reforms anyways. Yes, of course. Uh, so, I mean, are there any category of investors, especially long-term investors, mm. who are saying, okay, perhaps some of these names in the consumer goods companies can weather these storms and then let's just stick with them for this uh, at this time? Well, um, I know that obviously trading is still going on on those stocks, yes. so obviously people are traded. Uh, yeah, so investors will be looking at a couple of factors, mm. inflation, interest rates, right. and you also have to look at the, you know, the goals of this investor. Are they just there to take profits or to stay there long-term? So for long-term investors, they may... They might have some form of optimism, but we've not seen that mm. yet in the consumer goods space, right? So um, there are a couple of factors investors have to, you know, take into account. And number one has to be what are they, you know, what are they looking for? Is it profits or just, you know, something where they can just put their money in and lock in their game? Mm, right. All right. Talk to us about, I mean, trading so far this week is the first trading day of the week. Yeah. Uh, what, uh, what stocks are on your radio? What stocks do you see? Uh, pulling volume this week, perhaps as uh, investors uh, top favorites. Well, um, we on our radar we have um, Wapco on our radar. We saw Wapco gain about ten percent last week. Um, you know, that's what one of one of the industrial goods companies that's on our radar. Um, given that they have a lower exposure to FX, FX compared right. to Dangote Cement and Boisset. On the oil and gas space, we have you know Sepat and Aradel. You know Aradel's. Um, you know, the rally that he had, um, Seplat's rally that right. he had um, based off of its corporate action, you know, its acquisition and all that. Um, yeah, basically, and in the banking sector, we have GTCO. We've seen a couple of banks, you know, go into the um, capital markets, try to raise um, raise capital. Um, FPNH is right, is out there at the moment, and UBA. So I think UBA is up, um, was up today. Um, but FBNH is, um, I think, recorded a loss today. Mm, right. uh, how do investors feel? I mean, the board, uh, the FBNH board approved at 350, the 350 billion yeah. capital raise. I mean, other banks are doing, obviously, everyone is doing that uh, to meet the CBN's uh, deadline. Uh, but it's just, just a typical case of, you know, just bargain hunting, going in and coming out of the stock, not because of the 
news per se? Yeah, um, investors will always have their reasons, right? right. So one, one day stock is up, another day stock is down. But yeah, 350 billion, billion um, capital raising is just um, one of the things banks are doing right now to you know meet the requirements of the central bank. So now they are in the market to raise about 150 billion um, for um, that's one new ordinary share for every six. So that's just basically what they are doing to raise capital. Mm -hmm. Right, and I wanted to talk to you about I mean, uh, Flour Mills of Nigeria reviewing the share buy back to by 22.8 percent to 86 yeah. naira. What do we need to know about this story? Well, of course, we expected they were going to review it because at first they came out that is um, the majority shareholder, ex Exclusio. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> right. Well, um, they came out and said, oh, they want to buy out minority shareholders of Flamius at 7th Naira per share. Uh, when I saw that, I was like, hmm, that is too low a price for Flamius, given its reputation in the consumer goods right. industry, right? And if you think back, um, PZ came out um, sometime earlier this year, and they, their major shareholder wanted to buy back their shares at 23 Naira, which at that point was even lower than what the share price was trading at on the NGX. And the shareholders refused, they kicked back and demanded 100 Naira. So if PZ could, PZ shareholders could demand 100 Naira, I knew that um, Flamio shareholders will also want something more than um, 17 Naira. So. But at 86, what does it, I mean, how does it 86 Naira sound? If we're looking, well, looking at, I mean, the, the trading pairs, where the market is. Well, I think it could do higher right. than that, but it's way better than what it was, 17 Naira. Okay. Yes. All right, Kalisa, we'll leave it there. Thank you for talking to us today. Appreciate your time on yeah. the show. Kalisa Chilek, Investment Research Analyst at ARM Securities, uh, looking at the market, stock market here uh, in Nigeria.